Okay, welcome to another update on Archmage Rises, the game that's taking forever to finish. Uh, <laughs> Nick is back! Yay! Yay! Yay. <laughs> Nick, are you glad to be back from vacation? I am. I'm very glad. So vacations are a trial for you that you must endure? Yeah, they're overrated. I'm back to my uh, cloudy, rainy Portland hobble. Things are good. <laughs> back in the hobbit hole. That's good to hear. That's right. Okay, so uh, this week we're going to bring you up to date on what's going on with the build and um, how are we going to get this thing out to you. And so we are going to be talking specifically about the features and functions of build uh, 11 um, in terms of our objectives of what, what we're trying to deliver. It has now been two weeks since we did the big Why! 50th episode where we got everything working. Um, and it's been another week of uh, bug fixing and building stuff that needs to be there and and such so just to give everybody an idea um, I was working on the quests and uh, people have said hey I should get a reward for finishing a quest now I think that someone's thanks is reward enough but apparently <laughs> people want gold and items so I'm like okay fine so this uh, housewife uh, her husband's gone missing you return him and uh, they're like so grateful and they're like, thank you. And I'm like, what kind of reward should they have? Well, the reward should come out of their money, not some arbitrary amount that we say, uh, you know, missing person equals 1000 gold, um, returning the body 200 gold um, and uh, all that. Um, so it actually comes out of their money. So then I was like, okay, great. I'll just use their money. And then it turns out that the family money wasn't working. Um, we had it there, but the, when the people collected their pay, they wouldn't actually go home and deposit it into the family money. So basically, all the husbands and wives and I guess children were all keeping the money to themselves and they weren't mm -hmm. sharing it. And so it was like, how am I supposed to, you know, if I'm taking a household money uh, divided by 50% um, and that's what the reward is for returning their husband. Um, so basically that means uh, returning a rich person's spouse is better than, uh, than a poor person. Um, there was actually no money there and uh and so i was like oh i have to go fix that and so now i've been um fixing all that so that they actually have household money in order to be able to give the reward and such so anyways that's just taken me a day just to do that alone and um, mm -hmm. i don't know how you feel nick but uh the amount of code that we have on this game is i don't know it's a lot for an indie game it's like a big giant pile of code oh yeah it's crazy <laughs> but, you know, when you're trying to do something new that nobody's done before, um, you know, you see the reason why they haven't done it before, but you also uh, realize that every piece of code is necessary. Yeah. And so on the one hand, I feel like the game, the code base is very nimble, like we're able to add things very quickly. Uh, on the other hand, uh, it feels like we're trying to turn an aircraft carrier here every time uh, we go to do something is like ah oh, there's like so many things we have to think of and and check over and stuff so mm -hmm. um i don't know i guess uh the future will tell whether or not we have a well architected code base or not right now mm -hmm. i think we do but um yeah it just takes a while to add things because there's so many uh, intersections um things that can go wrong yeah that's more there's a lot of moving pieces right so if you know these pretty much very few things in the game are faked so uh, there's lots of little things that can go wrong and part of the problem is that it's hard to find those things you know you've got like hundreds or thousands of people running around something goes wrong it's like what happened and you have to like track them back so um we've been writing tools thomas has got you know their memories so we're, we're able to track them figure out what happened um just by reading their thoughts so that's um, that's been helping. We're building tools to make it faster. Yeah. Um, and I would say that's the biggest problem is it's it's really hard to find a bug when there's so many things going on. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. It's been a nightmare trying to find certain bugs and I'm like, why is mm -hmm. this person missing? And I have to mm -hmm. trace back through all the movements mm -hmm. of both the husband and the wife. And anyway, anyway, so. Mm -hmm. What we're really here to talk about is uh, what the objectives are for Build 11. So we've done a lot of update videos. The number at the bottom says number 52. So we've done a lot of update videos and uh, people have been waiting for um, this Build 11. And, um, and so we were like, okay, well, what are the core things that we've promised for Build 11? I mean, the worst thing we can do is a couple episodes ago, promise something and then not deliver on that. So we put together this list of uh, what we call the Build 11 objectives. Like these are the things that we're working towards, working, uh, playable and fun, 
Um, and that way, when we say, okay, here's bill 11, here's all the things that they're actually getting and the things that mm -hmm. they're not getting, right? Because, um, you know, if we got everything included, it would just take too long. So we're trying to create the short list and um, get it out there. So here is the short list. Now, we need your help with this. And what I mean by that is um, I've just created a Steam forum post that you can go to and you can tell us, hey, where is such and such? Like, I'm really looking forward to this particular feature that you mentioned. I don't see it in the list of build 11. Uh, that's what we need your help with, is uh, really um, understanding what your expectations are um, for this build. So let us know what your expectations are for the build by looking at our list of objectives. And if that doesn't line up with your uh, list of objectives, then let us know what the difference is. And if we can create a shorter list, then that would be great. <laughs> yeah, if there's something there you're like, this is worthless, let us know. We could maybe save some time on that, at least for this build. Yeah. But, you know, one person's going to say, oh, well, the grinder's worthless. And the other person's going to say, I've been so looking forward to the grinder, right? So, <laughs> um, so it's going to create uh, some uh, management on our part in order to really, really get a whole picture. But anyway, um, so this is the list. So uh, what we've done is put some uh, estimates in terms of time um, against each one of them. And uh, so you know how many days we think it's going to take, but um, we've... We've really been the worst at estimating uh, how long uh, things will take. But anyway, they seem like reasonable numbers to us. So uh, starting from the top, getting the real quests working. I've been working on the missing person quest for over a week. Uh, it is finally working that you can return someone. The next part I have to do is uh, returning their body. So um, they're missing and it's because they're dead as opposed to missing and because they were trapped or captured or taken away or something like that. Um, and then the second thing is uh, the layer uh, wipe. So those are the two kinds of quests that you'll be getting in build 11. So up until this point, we had these uh, fakey throwaway quests of go, go fetch an item and bring it back to me. And uh, at the time we would actually generate what that item was and shove it in a dungeon somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, these are real quests being generated by the simulated world. And, um, and so I, I think these two different kinds of quests will help demonstrate that. Um, and then that gives us a foundation to build on um, for later. So anyways, I think it's going to take me two days in order to get those uh, both those things working. Um, next is uh, interesting interactions with the NPCs. Um, we have the accompaniment already in there, um, trying to add some value to having the relationships with people. So it's like, hey, you did a quest for someone and now they love you. What does that mean? Like, who cares? Um, mm -hmm. So one example of that is that they can teach you a skill. So they're going to be good at something. All NPCs have a variety of skills. Um, they're going to be good at something. And uh, if your relationship is high enough, they will teach you uh, one skill point of that thing. And then, um, and then that's it. So that's just one small example uh, of something. And then um, fishing. Uh, the fishing is working. And um, we just want to make sure that it is still working because we've made a bunch of changes to how races and stuff work. Um, and then we're going to add a neat little feature of gambling. Yep. That's a plan. Mostly this is like the uh, sort of wrapping it up. Well, there's going to be a lot of testing going on throughout too. Um, so we want to make sure that we didn't break anything too bad. Um, play through the game. Take away our dev tools. And uh, make sure that, uh, you know, that everything works. Yep. Um, so if somebody says, oh, that gambling thing's not important to me and stuff, that's okay. It's it's only like a few hours, like an hour or two mm -hmm. in order to put that in. Um, and it can give uh, some quick bang for buck um, there. Um, mm -hmm. Next is the Mage Tower. And um, we want to make sure that you can still build the Mage Tower. Uh, we haven't looked at it or touched it in a very long time. Um, and that's where the cooking happens. Um, so having the ability to build a kitchen and be able to cook things uh, from there. And of course, the infamous grinder. That's where you mm -hmm. put that in. So I want you to be able to drag and drop and just drop things into the grinder and then they grind them. Um, so it's going to take some work for Nick uh, to go and do that. Yeah, the grinder works now, but it works kind of like an inventory. So you get an inventory grinder. Thomas thinks that's not cool enough. And uh, so we're going to do drag and drop. Okay. Um, next is equipment. Um, so many, many updates ago, we showed you the UI where you can equip your character with all this cool stuff, and uh, we've never actually had any equipment that you could do. Nick made a mm -hmm. few items just to prove it worked. Um, I've been working uh, over the last number of weeks on the weaponsmith, um, getting them working, their skill level, determining 
how good of a thing they build, uh, masterwork items versus regular items and stuff. So uh, I have been working on that. It does work for the weaponsmith. I now have to expand that out to the armor and just make sure the things that are available are interesting and they have cool names and um, all that. So uh, that, that'll take, I think, two days to get that, all that working. And then uh, next we have the world simulation. And uh, so we've been talking about passing like 100 years of time um, in and then the player goes in, and that is probably how the finished game is going to be, but uh, it takes way too long right now. Nobody wants to stick around for that, especially on build 11. It's like, hey, thanks for the 45-minute loading screen, guys. Mm -hmm. um, so that's not interesting. So we, we really kind of said, what what is the, the minimum viable product here? Uh, and it was like, okay, if we could simulate two years uh, before the player shows up, that probably fills in the world enough that you can go and do those real quests and have interesting NPC reactions and build your mage tower and buy equipment and all that stuff. So um, so that's our, our goal and Nick's going to work on the performance of that. Um, the next thing in world simulation is uh, the soldier job. Uh, we currently don't have any soldiers in uh, any of the towns and that creates a problem both for uh, enforcing, um, well, cutting down on crime. Um, and uh, also for dealing with the layers um, that are there. So people mm -hmm. being attacked and stuff. So I um, think I'll be able to do that in two days, uh, be able to put that in. Um, next is the town production. So just the, the towns are able to produce the resources that they need from around themselves, um, looking at the terrain around them, and they're able to generate the resources. Um, the whole supply chain is working, that uh, metal's getting turned into tools, that kind of thing. Um, next is starting uh, new settlements. So I don't know if someone's actually going to play the game long enough to see that a new settlement has actually been created. Um, but uh, we're going to make sure that that's working so you can play kind of a lifetime. Um, and uh, Nick, you were saying that uh, there would be like some kind of build up towards that new settlement. Um, yeah, I, I, Thomas made a good point that, you know, people don't. Uh, found towns uh, with nothing, right? They start with, uh, you know, they would need wood or they would need food. They need sort of a um, a starting package. So uh, I didn't like the idea of just going to a town and just building houses, right? Because those houses cost wood to build and there should be resources that you can affect that affects those type of things. So uh, we need to make a way that the mayor is sort of collecting up enough stuff before they send them out because otherwise people go out there and you know they're sending not their best people usually to go to a to settle a new town so um they're just kind of sitting around sleeping under the stars and then they eventually build it up right if they have enough resources but um but that's what we were discussing today is that maybe they should sort of build up a caravan of goods before they move so uh, settlements do work right now but um we could do some things to improve them and um you know, for anybody who's played Dwarf Fortress, um, you start with a caravan trailer, um, mm -hmm. right? There's like a, a wagon that has some of your starting supplies that run out. Um, same thing's true of Avon Colony, which is a game I've been playing recently. Um, when you go to, to found these alien colonies, you again have some basic stuff to get you going. Um, so uh, what's interesting about that is it creates quests which are like economic quests. So the town is like, hey, we need a hundred wood in order for this... Uh, uh, settlement to start up, right? So they're kind of building up towards that, and the player can can go and help with that. Right. Like if they don't have trade routes that give them those things, you might be able to go chop down wood yourself, or find a place that has a lot of excess wood, that kind of thing. So you can live your fantasy of being a wood chopper, a yeah, lumberjack, a lumberjack uh, in Archmage Rises. It's the, it's lumberjack the game. Rises. <laughs> it's the game that keeps on giving. <laughs> How appropriate for Christmas time. Mm -hmm. um, uh, okay, we want to make sure that uh, the economy works, i.e. doesn't fail. So what that means is that uh, as time goes by that the uh, towns don't wipe out because there's some fatal flaw in the economy and they, everybody just starts starving to death or something. So, uh, so we got to like work on that. Um, we think we have it um, already, but we have to make sure. Um, and then the last point there is that NPCs can heal at the healer. Um, we sort of had that working before, but... Um, now uh, that you can really visit people in every single town and people actually see each other when they when they go from building to building and stuff, mm -hmm. um, it's, it's just at, at a whole nother level now. Uh, so we want to make sure that's still working. Um, then the next one is is uh, Nick's biggest and scariest one, which is saving and loading. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are always fun bugs. You know, you load the game and then it just crashes and then it's uh, like really hard to track down. So, um, it's serialization. A good, it's a good thing the character object only has 4,000 fields on it that you need to check <laughs> to make sure they are coming back. Um, so anyways, we've, we've been adding things and not really caring about how they save and load. And uh, that's always... A recipe for disaster so we have no idea how long that particular task is going to take but three days is um, a fair estimate as opposed to three hours uh, mm -hmm. three three weeks is probably too long so there yeah. you go if it's not three days if it's not three hours and it's not three weeks it's three days now <laughs> you all know how to do a project management um, and then uh, one that we just added right before we started shooting this video was hey we should actually play test the game you know, mm -hmm. Nick keeps insisting that we actually play this game. Um, I mean, I think it's just great to have a giant list of features that work. And, uh, <laughs> but uh, actually playing the game and making sure it's fun and uh, smoothing out the rough edges and all that stuff. So um, we are going to uh, allocate four days to that. So when we add up all that time and we look at how much time we have left um, for the end of this year, I'm planning to take time off at Christmas time uh, for a week there. Um, we have 10 days left and uh, 14 days of work um, lined up here. So what we think we're going to do is uh, work the 10 days um, and hopefully be feature complete um, by the, uh, I think it's the 22nd of December. Um, and then when we come back to work on uh, January 2nd, um, that will begin the four days of playtesting. And we should mm -hmm. be able to push out a build on Friday, uh, January, uh, what was it, 5th? Yeah, January 5th. Um, so that's the plan right now. And um, I do not want to be held to the January 5th date because uh, it might become Monday the 7th <laughs> or uh, something like that. But anyways, uh, you know, we're, we're now talking in terms of hours and days and as far as uh, getting the build out. Um, now, the fans out there can uh, tell me what they think. But uh, a couple of weeks back, I was like, man, we got to get this build out before the end of the year. Like, man, are we ever really a bunch of fools for not getting this build out that we've been promising mm, roughly since April, May. Um, and uh, really, it was just about legitimacy um, about the game and such. But after we finally got it working uh, on the 50th episode and, and I saw it working that week, I was just like, wow, it's real. Like, there it is. And, um, and so from that perspective, the pressure of getting a build out by the end of this year uh, for credibility sake, I kind of feel that that is less important, but I want to know, maybe I'm reading that entirely wrong. And um, actually everybody think we're a bunch of jokers uh, and uh, we need to get a build out before the end of the year for credibility sake. So um, I don't know how we could cut down our feature list that we just shared with you um, in order to speed it up. Um, and uh, I don't know how we could work any faster than we currently are. Um, yeah, but, we can cut out all the testing, but I don't think that's wise. <laughs> hey, that's what I said before the, we started shooting this video. I was like, well, I'll just skip all that testing. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, obviously we, we need the testing. So anyway, um, yeah, untested build, you can have it December 22nd. Mm -hmm. Tested build, you're going to have to wait till January 5th. So let us know <laughs> which one do you want. I'm ready to get back to work. Okay, Nick's ready to get back to work, so we're going to stop sh shooting this video. Okay, bye everybody. <laughs> bye.